found footage. Love it or hate it, it's one of the most fun and usually least expensive ways for anyone to share a story without worrying about breaking the fourth wall because the characters can actually speak directly towards the camera and in turn, the audience. When someone is speaking directly to a camera, we get more insight on what they're thinking and feeling, just like a first person book. With that being said, I'm happy to say that today we're going to be exploring the Ted Caving Journal videos found on the channel Alex Archives, which is based on the original story, Ted the Caver, a short horror story by Ted Hegman. I'll be providing all the links connected to the story in the description, as usual. Now, to give you a very brief description of what the series is about, it's the type of series where you constantly feel paranoid and you can never shake off that feeling. Even if nothing bad is happening, you still feel a little stressed and anxious. And when bad things do inevitably happen, the fear of the unknown is more prominent and your imagination imagination runs wild. I highly recommend reading or watching this series, but if you're not convinced yet, then sit back, relax, and as always, my name is Ripestrea. Let's explore. 3012-2000, Lloyd's Tomb.mp4 in the beginning of this video, we get introduced to Ted, who comes off as a little awkward but seems chill. Behind him is a cave, and if you haven't guessed it, cave exploration is his hobby, and the reason why he's recording is because he found something interesting at the bottom, and he wants to document his journey. He seems excited about this, and before showing a closer look at the entrance, he shows another person off in the distance, setting up rope. It's a friend, but for some reason they want to be anonymous. So he's going to be called B, which is apparently the first letter of his name. With that information out of the way, we get shown the hole that leads into the cave, which is pretty deep, and Ted hopes it's unmarked territory because it would add to the excitement if they were the first to explore it. We then cut away to the two inside the cave, and it's a pretty tight passage that requires them to crawl while walking, and obviously it's dark because they're inside a cave, but regardless, after about an hour, they arrived at the end where there's a hole that could possibly lead to an unexplored passageway and cave system. Ted is excited about this and they want to explore further but need more equipment first to open up the hole since they can't exactly fit inside yet. So before the camera dies, they decided that they should leave, grab the equipment, and return on a later day. Also, they gave the location a name, Floyd's Tomb. And this is where the video ends. Now you might be looking at me and wondering, what's the big deal about this series? It's just two friends exploring a cave. What's so special about that? Oh my adorable viewers, just you wait. This is just the setup before things start to pick up and become more intense. And Floyd's tomb. They named it because it was a tight squeeze. However, there might be more merits to calling the cave a tomb later on. In order to find out, let's continue. 27-1-2001 Mysterious Cave MP4 we open with Ted once again, and it's been two weeks since they last visited the cave. Ted also clarifies to the audience that the reason why they're not sharing the location of the cave is because they don't want to put anyone in danger because it's unexplored. So until more is learned, they're going to call the area past Floyd's tomb, Mystery Cave. With that out of the way, they took off their harnesses because they're no longer needed, and once they arrived towards the end, they pulled out their tools to help open up the hole from the previous video. Ted also points out that it's been raining for a while, which is making the cave wet. And if you know anything about caves, you don't want to get stuck in one if it potentially starts to flood. But regardless, we get shown the hole which noticeably goes far out once we get a peek inside. And with that, the two started to chip away at it. It's not an easy job, but they're making decent progress and after a while, they decided to call it a day and plan to continue on on a later day. But before the video ends, Ted mentioned something interesting. While they were chipping away at the hole, there was occasional rumbling. B assumed it could be an animal like a bat or maybe the rain, but Ted isn't too convinced and is considering bringing in more friends to help. Now this is where the video ends. Everything is still calm, however the comment about hearing rumbling makes me feel uneasy. Almost like something is trying to scare the two away, to stop them from continuing. And if not that, it's a clear sign that they're not alone within the cave. To discover what that is, let's continue. 28-1-2001, Caving Information, MP4 they're back at the hole, but the two had to split up because Ted wanted to film the route they took, which would take him approximately two hours to go to the entrance and back. Why do they gotta split up? But the good thing about this is that this gives Ted the opportunity to talk to the camera alone. He admits that he's mainly filming for himself and assumes that the people who are watching his videos likely have experience in cave exploration, like him, but he quickly realized that a portion of his audience who are inexperienced would likely be confused with half of the things he's saying. So to combat this, he's going to be a little bit more informative. To begin, it turns out the cave was discovered around 60 to 70 years ago by the locals in the area due to mining, and only those in the area are aware of that cave. Because of that, there's noticeable graffiti and trash around the entrance, however the upside of things is that deeper into the cave, there's less of that, so that's nice. With that out of the way, Ted begins to explain what equipment they're using and how it works before descending back down into the cave to show off the root. The harness was left behind like before and we get shown tree roots seeping through the rock, which is actually kind of cool and a little creepy looking. Anyways, Ted continues to show off the root and the cave is still wet from the rain and obviously a tight squeeze, 
with a lot of bad poop. Ew. We then get shown a popcorn rock, which is a very spiky rock that you would hate to fall onto, and Ted takes a moment to sit in silence, which unnerves me for some reason. He even sits in complete darkness for fun, which... Why? I could never... Anyways, he rambles on for a good bit, bringing up a frightening scenario about anything being able to easily sneak up on you, which unnerved me more, but he did this to teach us a lesson. Always bring an emergency light. Understandable, good lesson. I actually really loved this moment because I was anxious the whole time. And he was fine! <laughs> like, dude, bro, stop being paranoid. Now we're turning back to the root. Ted is crawling and he starts talking about his experiences when he first began his hobby. Initially, he was frightened to enter tight spaces, but after a while, he grew more confident and more brave, which allowed him to do it more easily. After this, he shows off a pool of water which a local actually explored with scuba equipment, and Ted thinks it's cool, but he doesn't think he's going to explore it because that's a different ballpark from what he's used to. Anyways, he continued to walk but froze because he heard something off in the distance, but after a while, he assumed it was B, his friend, who was still chipping away at the hole. Speaking of which, he returned to B, and they switched places so B could take a break. And that's where the video ends. Darkness and mysterious noises in the background. If this isn't foreshadowing, I don't know what is. Being lost in the dark is one thing, but being lost in the dark while inside a cave? Sorry, but you're screwed. And if there are other things lurking in the cave with you, eh, they've long since evolved to not need vision to explore. So, <laughs> good luck. And remember Ted's lesson to always bring back up flashlights. Obviously. Now to the next video. 10-2-2001 WHIP.MP4 Ted begins the video by explaining why he and B go to the cave at night. Because it doesn't matter what time they go, it's going to be dark inside the cave regardless. Duh. But anyways, they're determined to break open the hole because they're excited to likely be the first people to step into that unexplored area, but before they do, Ted shows off B's dog. Her name is Whip and she's a caving dog who will be joining them on their journey. What a cutie. I'm worried. Anyways, once inside, they dropped their harnesses and also took a moment to talk about the rumbling. B asked his friends about it, who assumed that it might have come from an underground waterfall or the water from the rain, but Ted is still not convinced with the assumption because of how inconsistent it is. They ended the conversation there and continued moving. Whip is still so adorable and I love her. Wait, what is it, girl? What are you looking at? Is there something suspicious off in the distance? Hmm? <laughs> Anyways, Whip's reaction was ignored and they quickly arrived at the hole to continue digging. We actually watched them work for a while, but suddenly B stopped and froze in place. The reason why was because he heard something. It wasn't the rumbling or the water. It's something else. But Ted dismissed it and they returned to chipping away at the hole. More time passed and the two needed a break and checked on Whip, who was distracted and acting a little odd. At least she's okay. And after a few pats, they returned to work a little bit more but stopped after hearing something and noticing the breeze stopped. It was obviously strange, and they decided that it was now time to call it a day. Whip wanted to leave, and the drill's battery's dead, so it was the only option. So they left, and the video ends there. Thank goodness the dog's okay! Nothing intense is happening yet, but I still can't help but feel anxious while watching these videos! Curse my paranoid mind! And I watch one too many horror movies that involve a dog where something bad happens to them, so I was like extra paranoid! <laughs> I'm glad that Whip's okay though. Anyways, let's continue. 3-3-2001 The Scream.mp4 The video abruptly opens with Ted running towards B, who is noticeably injured. They quickly patched him up with their medical equipment, and after taking a moment to rest, the rumbling began. After this, Ted put the camera down and explained that Whip, the dog, was left back home because she obviously didn't seem to like the cave, and just like in the previous video, they were still working on the hole, so it was just best to leave her behind. Good, she's safer at home. As for B, he's feeling better, and after some digging, they assume that they're close to finishing, and Ted hopes that in Floyd's tomb, they might find Spanish treasure left behind by Spanish explorers. Of course, it could just be more cave, but it's still a fun thought regardless. They then continued chipping and drilling when suddenly a scream could be heard. They even noticed that the wind that was once there suddenly stopped along with the rumbling. You'd think they would just leave after this, but they continued to drill the hole for a little longer before eventually calling it a day and the video ends. First rumbling, then the gentle wind in the air ceasing, and now a random scream. At this point, it's clear that whatever they're about to uncover, it's something unnatural, or at least spooky. Not buried treasure, no gems or jewels, Animals can easily sense danger and the fact that Whip hates the cave makes it apparent that whatever they're about to see will change everything. And that scream! Could it be a lost explorer? Or something else? In order to find out, let's continue. 4-3-2001 Entering Floyd's Tomb.mp4
It opens with Ted removing his harness and the two explorers were still thinking about what happened the previous day. It's unnerving, so I don't blame them, but regardless, they made their way back to the hole to continue drilling. They made enough progress that Ted was able to crawl in despite the tight squeeze. One of his legs was secured with rope in case of emergencies and little by little, Ted crawled further inside to investigate and he realized that they're so close to fully entering the cave but needed the tiniest bit more work done before they could enter Floyd's tomb. This excited the two and Ted crawled back to B. If I was claustrophobic, I would probably hate this, but luckily I'm not. Also, with the way that I'm describing everything, it's hard to emphasize how tense it feels when watching these videos. I'm always paranoid and anxious as if something's about to jump at me on screen, but it's just two explorers who are excited and working hard to make an opening for themselves. Yet with all the things looming in the background, it's so hard to be excited with them. And in the end, B managed to crawl out of the cave without any assistance, which is a milestone for him for reasons that are personal, and this just adds to Ted's joy of today's events. With that, this is where the video ends. I'm concerned but want to see more, so let's continue. 7-4-2001, Exploring Beyond Floyd's Tomb MP4. The two excitedly returned to the cave and hole and got back to work in order to finally enter the cave. It took some time, but soon enough, Ted finished, grabbed needed equipment with his camera, and managed to crawl inside Floyd's tomb. <sighs> or technically mysterious cave that's past Floyd's tomb. He turned on his flashlight and confirmed there's a path that goes further inside, and he told B he was going to explore it for 30 minutes. With that, the two split ways and Ted moved further inside. There were some crawling spaces he needed to navigate, and while exploring, he found interesting cave formations and structures. He compared the structures to stringy cheese, a drumstick, and candle wax. There was also an oddly placed rock which was leaning against a wall that Ted noticed. He investigated it for a bit and suddenly found a mysterious symbol, potentially a hieroglyph. With that information, Ted returned to B, but he seemed a little paranoid because he ran at some point and looked behind him as if he was expecting something to be lurking in the dark. The rumbling also returned, but Ted continued pushing forward until he returned to B. Now reunited, Ted excitedly explains his discoveries and assumed that there must be another entrance because how else would there be a symbol in there? There must be another way inside that allowed someone to make those markings. He also talks about the structures inside and that there's more to discover, but that's for another day. And next time, they might bring a friend, someone capable of exploring the cave with Ted because it would be difficult for B to follow due to how difficult it is for him to crawl through such tight spaces. And with that, the video ends. Listen, I grew up with horror movies that are set inside caves, and there's either creatures inside of it, some weird time paradox, or a portal to hell. <sighs> the anticipation is killing me. Let's continue. 14-4-2001, Joe.mp4 it surprisingly opens during the day, and Ted brought a friend who is going to be called Joe. The three enter the cave, and Ted used the opportunity to explain to Joe what he should expect and what they'll do once they arrive at the hole. Speaking of which, they arrived, but B took Ted aside, and it turns out they didn't even mention the rumbling, strange winds, and screams to Joe. He's completely in the dark of the whole situation! Ted argued that no one will be endangered, and that they brought Joe so Ted wouldn't be alone, so everything should be fine. Sure... Anyways, Joe went into the hole first and Ted followed behind. Sadly, while crawling out, he fell and hit his head pretty badly. He bled a lot and because of this, he couldn't proceed forward and had to go back. As for Joe, since he was fine and because he's already there, he might as well go explore for at least a little bit and was given 20 minutes to check out the crystals and strange structures as Ted patched himself up with B's help. I hate it when people split up, it always unnerves me! But anyways, Ted returns to B in order to recover and suddenly he notices that the wind stopped and it's quiet ominous. Ted also used this opportunity to confess that the last time they were there, he could have sworn that he heard something similar to rocks rubbing against each other, and now that it's just quiet, it doesn't sit right with him. And after realizing how much time passed, the two started calling out to Joe, but didn't get a response. They started to freak out and yell some more, and luckily a light appeared and it was Joe who began to quickly crawl out of the cave. However, he didn't look okay. He was dirty and covered in injuries. He was able to speak, but he seemed a little shocked and just wanted to leave. So he started to walk away and the video ends with Ted and B hurriedly grabbing their equipment before chasing after Joe. And this, my friends, is why you never split up when you're exploring new environments. Something bad will always happen and Ted getting hurt at the very start should have been foreboding for the group. They should have just turned back, but sadly the thrill of adventure is too strong. Speaking of which, they're still going to return to the cave, so let's continue to the next video. 28-4-2001 We should never have opened the cave. MP4 Yep, the video hasn't even started and I'm already nervous because of the title! Anyways, the video opens with Ted as usual, but instead of being excited like in previous videos, he's more serious. It's a very noticeable contrast if you compared him to the first video. He goes on to say that we might believe him and B are irrational, naive, or ignorant, 
but all that work that was put into the cave made them return. It was like an unspoken commitment to the two and they can't just abandon it. They have to see it through despite what happened previously. They also have so many questions and hope to discover the answers, not just for their sake, but for Joe too. Joe isn't doing too well. He's different, not fully there. They tried speaking to him after the incident, but it was difficult to reach him and he kept calling off of work. As for going to his house, that didn't work much either. So likely fueled with guilt and curiosity, Ted and B ventured forth to discover the answers and even brought extra equipment that would allow the two to communicate with each other. As mentioned previously, B can't join Ted in the cave due to personal difficulties that make it impossible for him to crawl through that tight hole, so Ted had to enter the cave alone as B waited. And as usual, they left the harnesses towards the cave exit. This will be important later. So after squeezing past the hole, Ted wandered around the area, looking at the strange formations and documenting everything in order to show B later. Eventually, Ted found the hieroglyphs from before and it almost looked like it depicted people below the symbol itself. After looking at that for a bit, Ted continued moving because the cave goes further past that hieroglyph, but he stopped in order to radio in B. Luckily, B was fine, which was reassuring, and this eased Ted's nerves enough to continue. So he proceeded to walk forward, leaving the area to enter the next, but suddenly the sound of rocks scraping could be heard behind him, and Ted quickly whipped around, but ended up hitting his head on the ceiling and breaking his light in the process. And because of this impact, despite his helmet, he was in so much pain. However, the worst part was that he's now plunged in darkness, which is obviously terrifying. At least the strange scraping stopped, but the lack of light is still uh, an issue. So he attempted to turn on his emergency light, which sadly didn't seem to work. So he resorted to using a glow stick, but that didn't do much either and at some point he threw it to likely see the surroundings more, however, it's still pretty dark. It's a very small light, okay? Ted then remembered the phone, so he hurriedly searched for it, but that stopped working too. Damn, nothing's going his way. He then pulled out another stick and attempted to navigate back to the hole. While walking, he unexpectedly stumbled across a large rock, and this was surprising because he quickly realized that this rock was the one he saw before, the one that was leaning against the wall. However, it's no longer in its normal position. It moved. Why is this alarming? because behind this rock was a hole that led to another passage, meaning something must have pushed the rock and is now in the cave with Ted. Speaking of which, he looked off in the distance towards the glow stick he threw and after focusing on it for a bit, eh, he must have seen something because he, it provoked him to run away. Understandable reaction, especially after that discovery. Uh -huh. Anyways, he was running for a bit, but eventually took a moment to catch his breath, but the sounds of footsteps in the distance motivated him to keep going, so he pushed himself forward to keep moving, and luckily he managed to find his way back to the hole that leads back to B. He screams at B to grab the equipment and to run because there's something else in the cave with them, and after giving this warning, Ted started to gag and cough. There's a mysterious and grotesque smell compared to death but there's no time to question it, so he hurriedly squeezed through the hole. Once out, Ted runs just behind B into the long and tight tunnel that they always take in order to enter Floyd's tomb and eventually reach the rope that they set up that leads to outside. Also during this moment, Ted noticed that he was covered in blood, but he can't focus on that now because he's still being chased. The rope behind him was being pulled. As for B, because he had a head start, he managed to quickly put on his harness and began to crawl up the rope, while Ted was still at the bottom, putting on his harness. If you forgot, Ted and B always remove their harnesses for efficiency when dropping down into the cave, which is why they don't have it on immediately. This is clearly biting them in the butt because Ted is wasting time putting it back on, and as for the thing in the cave, it starts pulling on the rope again, continuing the chase. And this is when the video abruptly ends. Yikes! I'm so excited, let's continue and I'll share my thoughts later. 19.5.2001, going back, .mp4. Why? So the video opens with a view of both indoors and outdoors before showing Ted who looks like a mess. He explains to us that he keeps seeing things and is struggling to sleep. And when he does pass out, he only gets nightmares. The incident back at the cave affected him so much that it's even difficult for him to go outside. The reason why is because there's something outside, something watching him. He can hear it. He tried to do research on the local myths and hopes to find any information that will help and decided that he needs to buy a gun for protection. And while rambling, he stopped when he heard something off in the distance. He pointed the camera towards the door and is positive that something is on the other side. That's when we suddenly hear scraping before switching away to Ted pointing the camera towards the stairs. He set the camera down and took a few steps forward but jumped after the sound of ringing could be heard. We then cut away to the 19th and Ted claims that he's feeling much better and that he talked to B and Joe. The unexpected thing was that they want to go back to Floyd's tomb. <sighs> in two hours, they'll be heading out and luckily they're going extra prepared with a gun, knife, medical kit, food supplies, writing tools, 
and more rope and lights and, of course, the camera. Now, why are they going back? Ted says that he just needs closure. He needs to know what's at the end of that cave. Not only that, but it's almost like the cave is calling to them. And if Ted wants any hope of returning back to a normal life, he needs to go back. And no amount of begging from the viewers will keep him away. So they made it back to the cave's entrance and before hopping in, Ted left a message for his family and friends. He said he'll be fine and he plans on returning in a few hours or the following day. And if they stop by his house, he'll show them the video of what's in Floyd's tomb. But until then, this is the end of Ted's cave journal and the end of the video too. As for the website, it hasn't been updated since. Ted is gone. Let's go to my final thoughts. Conclusion. Everyone, listen, this is a phenomenal adaptation of the actual story. I read it in order to get more insight about Ted's thoughts and more details about the cave itself. And let me tell you, the video series covered it beautifully, at least in my opinion, but enough of that. Theory time. So that rock. When the story first mentioned the sound of rock scraping and later getting shown a large rock being moved, I initially assumed the rocks were the monsters in the cave. <laughs> Don't laugh at me! The reason why I believe this is because I thought the strange formations and structures were alive, and they're moving around in order to imprison whatever poor soul enters the area. And once something gets caught in its web, the person obviously dies and the cave feeds off of its decomposing corpse? Think about it, the circle of life. Animals die and their corpse are basically used as fertilizer for the earth. Maybe the cave takes in bodies, using it to make more formations and rock structures. Like every dead person becomes a part of the cave? Interesting, huh? But for as fun as that thought is, the logical assumption is that there's an actual monster or creature or whatever. A monster that pushed that rock and that's the reason why the rock was in a different location. That rock was basically acting as its door that leads to its own hole. Remember that mysterious hole that leads to another passageway? That's probably where this monster came from. And if that is the case, it's still an interesting threat because we don't know what it looks like. It could be anything, something humanoid or just completely out of this world. That's the beauty of the unknown. It's unsettling and unpredictable, which is why that's my biggest fear and why this series uh, affected me a lot more than the other series so far that I've covered. <laughs> I like to keep things lighthearted, but honestly, and I mean this, the series really got under my skin. I love it because of how freaked out it made me feel, but damn, it was hard. I wanted to look away so many times because I kept feeling too paranoid, and when the setting became too dark, I, I was holding back tears. Yeah. This series got me, even reading the story itself got me, damn. <laughs> Call me a coward. Uh. But ignoring that tangent, that hieroglyph. I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. It could be nothing, but there has to be more to it, right? I tried looking up actual hieroglyphs, which only made my head hurt. I, I don't know what I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, but I couldn't, I just can't, I can't. Do you guys have any ideas? Do you have any ideas? I'm trying, I was like, mm, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I wanna know. Like, is it important? Is it not important? Is it just there? Is it a curse? It has to be something and I just don't know what. And maybe it was just put in there to sprinkle in flavor of spookiness. But like, there has to be a reason behind it. Also, the rumbling and wind stuff. The rumbling could be coming from like the rocks being pushed away from that hole and the wind could be coming from that hole. So whenever the rock gets pushed back to cover the hole, again, it's acting like a door, it stops the wind. And once that stops moving, that rumbling stops as well. So whatever is in that cave, it's going back and forth between Floyd's tomb, that mysterious cave area, and then leaving. And that's what's causing the random inconsistent winds and rumbling. As for that scream, it was either that creature's prey or it was just its call, its sound. You know, like a bird going cuckoo, that creature goes, ah. <laughs> where, am I, where am I going with this? I'm just like, oh my gosh. I really, I really liked this. I really liked this, man. And again, I really encourage that you watch it yourselves. Like, bro. And sure, I spoiled it for you, but come on. Watching it just adds a whole nother level of enjoyment. So give it a watch. And that's all I have to say for now. Links are in the description. And as always, my name is Riva Estrella. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do that funny little notification thing. I have a Twitter. And yeah, better not catch you dying on me. Goodbye.